Science! Welcome to another episode of our spooky science series. This time, we will be shuffling our feet and looking for brains as I try to uncover the origin, the strange encounters, and the possible explanation behind the walking dead themselves, the science of zombies. As always, if you dig this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and check out our full Halloween science playlist for more. When I uncovered the science of vampires on another spooky science episode, I found out about revenants, which are the precursor to zombies. These undead revenants are, in the most basic of terms, a reanimated corpse. The way that corpse gets reanimated, though, can be varied. The most common way in folklore is because of magic. In the folklore of Haiti, the dead person is said to be revived by the act of necromancy, calling upon the spirits, and performed by a bokor or a voodoo witch. Once the ritual is complete, the zombie will remain under the control of the bokor. There is also another type of zombie in Haitian tradition known as a zombie astral. This is more like a representation of the human soul and can be used to enhance the power of the bokor or sealed inside a special bottle and given as good luck. Both of these types of zombies reflect the Haitian voodoo belief of soul dualism, a reverence for the flesh and the spirit. While zombies have become more popular in movies and television in the last 50 years, with many of their most famous traits attributed to these fictional representations, where does the idea of a zombie actually come from? Even before the term was used, the zombie can be traced back to some South African cultures. And again, the idea that someone could be transformed into a zombie by powerful magic, only to be reversed by a more powerful sangoma, or a traditional healer. Most scholars associate the Haitian zombie beliefs with that of African cultures, these ideas being brought to Haiti by enslaved African people. In fact, it came to be told that the voodoo deity Baron Samdi would gather the recently departed from their graves to transport them to the afterlife. Unless, of course, they had offended him in some way, and he would then make them a zombie forever. This all leads back to necromancy, which definitely has its roots in shamanism. Necromancy and necromancers crop up in the records of ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome, and the oldest literary account of it is found in Homer's Odyssey. As Christianity swept through Europe in the Middle Ages, necromancy was associated more with resurrection, but could only be achieved with the assistance of God. The Catholic Church actually condemned it, saying that necromancers were actually conjuring demons who only took the appearance of spirits. Also, the magic rituals and traditions of the early shamans and necromancers gave way to more uses of toxic and hallucinogenic plants to invoke and possibly bring back the dead. The Middle Ages then gave way to the Renaissance and new ways of thinking, and necromancy has all become myth and legend since then. Leonardo da Vinci even wrote of it in his notebooks, saying, Of all human opinions, that is to be reputed the most foolish, which deals with the belief in necromancy, the sister of alchemy, which gives birth to simple and natural things. Necromancy, as in the idea that you can raise a soul from the dead, is still very present today, though, thanks in part to popular culture and those that still practice occultism. In the 1920s and 30s, American horror author H.P. Lovecraft wrote a few stories that dealt with the undead, most notably Herbert West, Reanimator. In that story, Lovecraft never actually calls the being zombies, but the main character, mad scientist Herbert West, resurrects human corpses that then become violent and uncontrollable. In the 1950s, EC Comics would pull zombies into the land of the living once again with stories from Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. These comics, along with author Richard Matheson's 1954 novel I Am Legend, 
would help define what the modern zombie version looked like, as both these properties would directly influence George A. Romero and his film, Night of the Living Dead. This depiction of the undead would go on to become the benchmark for zombies, and subsequent films would introduce the tropes of slow-moving monsters that are hungry for human flesh or brains. All of this has informed the modern-day storytelling surrounding the zombie, with notable mentions of The Walking Dead and 28 Days Later, creating the idea of a zombie apocalypse through the spread of a virus that turns every corpse into an undead creature. But is there any reality in that claim, where instead of magic, the dead will walk again thanks to some sort of pathogen or virus? Or how about some way that a creature could actually become undead? Does that even exist in science? Actually, it does. And there are a few examples of real life zombies in the scientific record. Ophiocordyceps is a species of fungus that targets and infects insects through their spores. When this fungus infects a carpenter ant, it literally turns them into zombies. The ants become compelled to climb to the top of elevated vegetation where they affix themselves and then die, allowing the fungus to grow and spread its spores far and wide. In another insect-turned-zombie scenario, scientists last year found a strange occurrence with spiders in the Amazon. The species of spider, Aliosimus eximius, prefer to remain in colonies their whole lives unless they happen to get infected by the Zatipota wasp. This is where it gets really creepy. The wasp will lay eggs in the abdomen of the spider, when the egg hatches, the wasp larva emerges and starts to feed on the spider from the inside and then takes control of its body. The zombie spider then breaks off from its colony to weave a tight web cocoon, which allows for the wasp larva to grow into an adult and finish feeding on the remains of the spider. The entire idea of a zombie apocalypse has completely infected the imagination of storytellers for some time now, and one has to wonder, could it actually happen? The real-life Dr. Zombie laid out exactly what might happen in a real-world zombie apocalypse. Harvard Medical School professor and psychiatrist Dr. Steven Schlotzman talked it over with LiveScience.com in 2013. Trying to explain the phenomenon in the most scientific way possible, he created a fictional look at what constitutes a zombie in his book, The Zombie Autopsies, Secret Notebooks from the Apocalypse. First of all, he throws away the idea of reanimating the dead. It's not scientifically possible, so his version of a zombie is more philosophically dead. He then goes on to lay out his reasons behind the way zombies act. Their lack of balance, shuffling walk, and difficulty getting around could be attributed to problems cropping up in the brain, most specifically the cerebellum, which is responsible for motor skills and coordination. So how about that insatiable hunger that zombies seem to always exhibit? Dr. Schlotzman says there are certain viruses and also certain lesions that can affect a region of the brain that affects satiety. And that affects the sense that you've eaten enough. So maybe the reason zombies yell brains is not just for the food that they crave, but as a description of the medical condition they are currently suffering from. Another fictional trait of the modern zombie is that the disease is usually spread through a bite from an infected corpse. The model for a virus transmitted through a bite, such as the rabies virus, doesn't actually spread too quickly because it can be contained rather easily. Yet, if the zombie virus became an airborne type of virus, the takeover could be global and terrifyingly quick, just like you've seen in the movies. Even the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has created a zombie preparedness website, which they actually provide sound advice on an impending zombie apocalypse. 
These are actually great tips for any type of disaster or global emergency, like picking a meeting place for family and friends to regroup during an emergency, and a list of vital supplies you would need in an emergency kit. While actual corpses rising from the grave to feast on your brains only live in our imagination, zombies do have some real-world parallels that just makes the monsters even more spooky. So the next time you play your favorite video game fighting zombies or watch the latest Walking Dead spinoff, take a minute to go over your preparedness plan in your own head if zombies were to come knocking on your door. Because if the zombie apocalypse did happen, would you survive? Thanks again for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and check out our Halloween Science playlist for more exciting episodes.